All right, it's time we take a deep dive on the Cisco DevNet Associate exam. So we know that DevNet is coming, but what is the DevNet? Who is it really for? Now, before we begin, let me give a huge shout out and say thank you to Cisco DevNet for hooking me up with this killer swag. Everybody make sure you're following at Cisco DevNet for getting the latest and greatest news from them. And of course, anything DevNet related, tag it with hashtag DevNet. I also want to take a moment to say thank you to every person who has subscribed so far. I am so excited about how this channel is growing. I've got some big ideas down the road. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that little button right there in the bottom corner. It's free. It doesn't cost anything. And it really goes a long way for content creators like myself whenever you click that button. All right, let's talk about this a little bit more. The DevNet. We know that there's this thing called network automation. It's out there in the realm. Video coming up soon talking about what that actually means. And we know that Cisco is coming out with this exam called the Cisco DevNet. And we've heard about this thing called Python. What is really going on here? What is really going on with this exam? That's what I'm here to talk to you about. I want to talk about who this exam is for and what is going to be covered on it and how CBT Nuggets is gonna handle this stuff for you. Let's get going. All right, so I'm on the Cisco DevNet webpage where it's giving you a brief introduction to the exam. Let's click into the actual exam code, 200-901, and then we'll click on exam topics, and that's gonna bring us to where we want to be to talk about this specific exam. All right, so the first thing it immediately tells us, this is a 120 minute exam. And this is gonna be testing us software development and design, including using APIs, Cisco platforms, applications, security and infrastructure and automation now the course developing applications and automating workflows says blah, 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 blah. so one of the okay let, let's just cut right to the point one of the key things that they're selling this as is they're selling this as a software development course well at the end of the day what we're building is we're building a network we're just going about it a different way than we've always done which was with the command line interface so that's why I like to think that Keith Barker tackling network fundamentals, that's going to be really, really important because Keith Barker is just an amazing network fundamentals instructor. He's how he's who I learned my network fundamentals from years ago. So really, if you're in software development, don't just focus on the things that you're good at, which is software development design and APIs you're going to want to focus on network fundamentals. And if you're already in networking, well, then you've probably got a leg up because the end goal is going to be to build a network. Really, you need to understand why we're developing code in order to anticipate what the next step is going to be. In this case, we're developing code to program a network. So if we need to deploy VLANs and subnets and ACLs and NAT rules, well, if you don't know what those are, then you really don't know what you're coding against there, do you? So this is going to be really, really important. I think this honestly may be the most important aspect of the whole thing is to really master network fundamentals uh, so that you know why you're doing what you're doing. All right, next up, we have software design and APIs. Let's actually go ahead and just expand these infos out a little bit here. We'll do show details here. Let's click, struggling. There we go. All right, we'll clear the screen. All right, so there's a lot going on in these two right here. And there are a lot of fundamentals to software development. We are dealing with data structures like XML, JSON, and YAML. And then we're going to get into management structures and then some software development principles like functions and classes. Uh, then we get into frameworks like MVC and Observer, and then we even get into Git. And then once you've got all this code understood, we then dive into APIs, which is how are we going to be transmitting data back and forth between our network devices and our, and our computers. It's probably going to be through some form of an API. And these two sections right here, this is going to be taught to you by Ben Finkel. If you haven't followed Ben Finkel yet on Twitter, make sure you get at him. Because, yet again, another guy that I learned from, I learned Python from Ben Finkel, as well as some Azure stuff, too. All right, let's clear the screen. We'll dig down a little bit deeper here. And now the next three are a little intriguing to me. And, and this is kind of where I'm like, I don't really understand why they listed them in this specific order. 
because application development and security, application deployment and security, I would really put all of this kind of sandwiched somewhere between one and two, if that were me. Because here's the thing, let's kind of write it all out on the screen. We've got software development fundamentals. We've got APIs. We've got application deployment and security. And we've got network fundamentals too. So guess what? All of these things are all fundamentals before we've ever configured a single network device yet. We haven't programmed a single network device or gone through any sort of automation. This, these sections right here, they account for 65% of the Cisco DevNet exam based on this 15, this 20. And there's another 15 and 15 somewhere else down there. I think the network fundamentals are 15 and application deployment is 15. So that way 65% of the exam is just setting up fundamentals before you ever touch a Cisco device. But then when you do get into the Cisco devices, it covers a whole lot. Let's scroll down a little bit more and take a look at this. Okay. So we're looking at number three and number five at this point, because number three is the development section and number five is the automation. So three, what this is telling us is that we're going to learn about all of the different platforms. But first of all, and this is, this is again, why I think this is a weird order. First, we're going to be looking at the network devices themselves. How do we actually program an individual iOS device or an individual Nexus device? And then up here, you go on to configuring the actual data centers and the controllers in those data centers, such as Meraki, DNA Center, ACI, SD-WAN, and NSO. And then they also want you to just to understand the functionalities and the capabilities of UCS, collaboration tools, and security. Now, these describes, these are all talking about just understanding the basic capabilities, be able to understand what they do, but that doesn't mean ignore them because right down here at 3.9, this actually construct code to perform specific operations against Meraki, DNA, ACI, WAN, NSO, WebEx, Meraki again, DNA again. And you better believe that when you're talking about Yang, RESTConf, and NetConf, you're going to be interacting directly with these devices here. Now, I love 3.7. Let me clear the screen right here. 3.7 is telling you they want you to be able to understand how to lab and learn. This is not just about doing things in production. They actually want you to use their tools in the sandbox. They want you to explore the forums, the learning labs, the API documentation. There's also the code exchange, which is really cool. Once you're completed with three, you'll be able to use Python to interact with these devices, but you have, still haven't automated very much. You can, you can automate some things, uh, but that doesn't actually do massive scale automation. That's what number five down here is all about. Let's scroll a little bit and we'll clear the screen. So what five is all about is actually using a tool called Ansible to actually connect to a series of devices or a data center and control configurations provisioning, deployment, all sorts of stuff. So between section three and section five, what we are looking at here is 35% of the exam is actually getting hands-on with Cisco devices and configuration. Once you move to the Cisco DevNet Professional, those percentages flip from 65% fundamentals to 35%. They flip to where now you're doing majority of configuration and automation at that point. But that's not to say that this is all fundamentals and you're going to walk away without any real production level skills. You will absolutely, by the time you're done with this exam, just your own intellectual curiosity will carry you to the next level and you will absolutely want to dig in more into this exam. Now, I haven't seen this exam myself. I don't think many people have, and I can't speak to how difficult this exam is going to be and what exactly is going to be on it and how the questions are going to be. The last, I can't speak to any of that. But what I can tell you is that this is a big exam. They are laying a whole lot of foundations and principles all together. And in my own studying through network automation and Python and all of these things, yeah, it felt like I just wanted to dive right into the network and I'd figure the rest out without really having to learn the core things like Python and then Ansible without really learning those first. And it was only when I took a step back and I took my time and I learned Python and then I learned Ansible and then I learned how the protocols work. That was when it all clicked and I went, oh my gosh, this is really cool. I get it. Like I get what's going on. And now I'm like, oh, I can take the next step. Oh, if we did this, then we could do that. 
that's what's going to happen for you. But understand that this is going to be one of those journeys where this is going to be a big test and you're going to have to go at a, a sane pace so that you don't burn out and don't give up. For me, it took a month or two to really get to a position where I was comfortable with the automation part of things. So my tip to you there is just to keep in mind that this is going to be a, a big thing that we're tackling here, but that is going to pay major dividends down the road because automation, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable how powerful it is, how big of a time saver it is, how efficient it is, how big of a cost saver it is. There's a reason why the industry is moving to this. There's a reason why Cisco is like, we are going to incentivize people to learn this stuff because this is where we want the industry to go. This is where everything is going. And everyone at CVT Nuggets is so excited to be working on this for you, to get this training ready for you. There is a real buzz in the air to provide this training content for you, the learner, so that you can excel in your career. So thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.